Hello viewers, hello parents. This is Dr. Lalit Vipul from Visions Clinic and My Own Space. So this video is about methylation, the role of vitamin B12 in autism. Now there have been a lot of controversies, a lot of discussion, how vitamin B12 is useful in autism, what are the various reactions, how does it act at the cellular level, what is detoxification, what is epigenetics, what is methylation. So in this video, I'll try to explain some of the basics of vitamin B12 methylation cycle. Although it is a very complex mechanism, but I'll try to explain as far as possible in a very simplified manner and hope after listening to this lecture, after listening to this video, we'll be able to understand some basic points of vitamin B12 and how it is important in autism and how it can benefit the children who are on the spectrum. So coming to methylation. Now what is this methylation? Methylation is a process in which methyl groups are added into the body, into a particular molecules to provide and to carry out the various reactions. Now vitamin B12 is very, very important in our body and it is responsible for carrying out more than 200 reactions in our body. Now coming to this diagram, see, this is the methylation cycle which I will try to explain to each of you. See, the methylation cycle or what we call as a vitamin B12. Now vitamin B12, it occurs in different forms. It may be present in the form of cyanocobalamin. It may be present in the form of hydroxycobalamin and methylcobalamin. Now what is this methylcobalamin? Now for us, methylcobalamin is the most important factor of what we call as MB12. This is the active form which is responsible for carrying out the major functions in our body. And what happens in our body, there is a cycle which is known by the name MC cycle or methylation cycle. Now this methylation cycle, or we can say it is a wheel, it keeps on rotating. So when it keeps on rotating, this is a methylation cycle. If you, come to, if you see the structure of vitamin B12, it is somewhat very complex, but at the end of these groups, they have these methyl groups, CH3. Now these groups are very, very important. They are not present in this cyanocobalamin form or hydroxylcobalamin form. That is why we are more concerned with methylcobalamin because it contains this form of vitamin B12 or MB12 contains these methyl groups. And these methyl groups are important because they are responsible, these form of vitamin B12 is responsible for providing these methyl groups to as many as more than 200 reactions which are very important in our body. So what happens? Considering this as a methylation cycle of the wheel, now this methylation cycle of the wheel, it keeps on rotating and when it keeps on rotating, it keeps on dispersing these methyl groups. See, these are the methyl groups which are keep on being dispersed. So when this cycle keeps on rotating, these methyl groups which are present, they keep on dispersing. And when they keep on dispersing, they are carrying out various other functions. So what happens, considering this as a methyl cycle or methylation cycle, it is considered that this cycle is deficient or inactive or it is not carrying out proper functions in 40 to 80 percent of the ASD kids. This is the basis of the biochemical uh, phenomena, the biochemical reactions which are occurring in children who are on the spectrum. So it is believed that this cycle is not working properly in 40 to 80 percent of the children who are on the spectrum. So as a result, what happens? As a result of this cycle, when it is not functioning properly, the methyl groups are not being carried out in a proper way. So if this cycle is not able to disperse the methyl groups, now what happens when these methyl groups are dispersed? These methyl groups then are responsible for carrying out various other functions like they are responsible for proteins, they are responsible for reducing the oxidation stress levels, they are responsible for detoxification, they are responsible for repairing of the genetic material like DNA, RNA. They are responsible for epigenetics. Now we must have your lot of time what is epigenetics. Epigenetics is basically a mechanism in which we regulate, in which the gene expressions can be modified or regulated, in which these methylation cycle of methyl B12 is very, very important. It is responsible for controlling the inflammation. That is the swelling in the brain or neuroinflammation, which is responsible for carrying out aggression, behavior, hyperactivity. And another most important factor is that it is responsible for making this glutathione, that is GSL. Now this glutathione is the major antioxidant which is present in our body, which is responsible for carrying out a lot of detoxification process, reducing the oxidation stress levels in our body. And it has been found in a lot of literature and recent studies that the level of reduced glutathione to that of oxidized glutathione is very, very high. It means to say 
the ratio of reduced glutathione to that of oxidized glutathione is high. So that is the reason that oxidized glutathione levels are high and reduced glutathione levels are low because the amount of glutathione which is there, which is produced by this methylation cycle is defective because this methylation cycle is not functioning properly. So the amount of glutathione which is present, which is a major antioxidant is deficient or it is very low levels in the children who are on the spectrum. Now, another important thing to note is that this methylation cycle, which is responsible for producing large amounts of methyl groups, it is also plays a very important role in converting these folates and folic acid. Now, we also know that folic acid and folates are very, very important. Now, folic acids and folates, as such, they are not in active form. They are in non-usable form. They are not active. What happens? The amount of uh, foods, the amount of vegetables, the various products which we eat, they contain a lot, normal diet contains a lot amount of folic acid and folates. But what happens? These folic acid and folates are not important. When they get entered into the body through the diet, they have to be converted into this active form, which is known as folinic acid. Now, this folinic acid is the active form which is present in our body and is responsible for carrying out various functions like 100, 200 to more than that, along with these methyl groups. So, this conversion of folic acid of folates into folinic acid, which is the active form of folates, requires these methyl groups. Plus, it requires an enzyme which is known as MTFHR, that is methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase. Now, it has been found that in the children who are on the spectrum, especially in Asian population, it has been found this enzyme has found to be deficient. Now, when this enzyme is deficient, because the gene which is responsible for making this enzyme is deficient. That is why we suggest children to go for MTFHR gene polymorphism instead. So it is not that everybody should go. It is only in a selected group of population where we advise to go for MTFHR genes in which we found the functioning or various other parameters are there, but we won't go into the details of that. But the basic thing is that this enzyme MTFHR is responsible for converting these inactive form of folic acid into active form, which is known as folic acid. So this reaction requires the presence of this MTFHR gene plus these methyl groups. So when in spectrum, those children who are on the spectrum, they are having this methylation wheel or cycle defect in 40 to 80 percent of the kids. So as a result, this active form of polymic acid is not produced. Methylation, uh, the methyl groups are not produced. So this is hampering all these processes. So now coming, what happens basically? See this. Polinic acid plus methyl groups, they are converted. Consider it has to be a cell battery. Now, every cell, I'm just giving you a very hypothetical example. Consider it to be a battery. So, what happened as a result of these methylation cycle or methylation wheel, which is responsible for controlling more than 200 processes in our body, it produces a lot of methyl groups, it produces a lot of active form of polinic acid, which gets stored in our cells. Now, in the cells, we consider it to be a small battery in our cells, they keep on storing in them. Now, when they keep on storing in them, they are utilized by the mitochondria. We have this, we have heard a lot of things that children who are on the spectrum, they have mitochondrial disorders. Now, what is this mitochondrial disorders? Now, my, consider mitochondria to be an engine of a body. This, that is the main engine. Now, imagine if the engine is disturbed, then how the trains will be, uh, how the train will be moving or the bogies will be moving. Considering mitochondria as an engine, and considering the rest various other cells as the bogies of the train. So, so if this mitochondria is affected, the whole train will not be working. Similar is the case. If this mitochondria is affected, the system or the cells in our body will not be functioning. So now what happens? These methyl groups and the active form of poly folates, that is the polynic acid, they are utilized by the mitochondria. The mitochondria is utilizing them to carry out the functions of detoxification. That is, it will remove and eliminate the various waste products from our body. It will detoxify our body, the daily things which we eat. They have to be excreted from the body. A lot of things are there which, have, which, which are undergo detoxification so that the toxic materials are released from our body. We are eating so much processed food. We are eating so much products. There is a lot of preservatives. There are a lot of chemicals. There is so many toxication. And naturally, there are a lot of urea cycle. Various other products keep on going in our body which results in production of a lot amount of toxic acids or toxic products which are produced in our body, they have to be eliminated through this process of mitochondrial function. But for this function, they require methyl groups, they require this folinic acid. When these folinic acid and these methyl groups are not available for the mitochondria, 
the mitochondria is not able to carry out the function of detoxification and various other processes. As a result of which, what happens? Children who are on the spectrum, they are facing problems of mitochondrial disorders, they are facing problems of detoxification. Now, what happens? Again, another important thing, we, have, we know that there are two most important neurotransmitters like serotonin, glutamate, they are inhibitory and excitatory neurotransmitters. Now, what happens? The children who are on the spectrum, the neurotransmitter balance in them is disturbed. What happens? Just consider, imagine, now this is a balance, this balance is disturbed with excitatory neurotransmitters being on a higher side and inhibitory neurotransmitters being on a lower side. Normally what happens, this balance has to be maintained. But here in children who are on the spectrum, the balance is disturbed with the predominance of excitatory neurotransmitters on a higher side, that is the glutamate, compared to the inhibitory neurotransmitter. As a result, they are more hyperactive, they have more sleep disturbances, they are more aggressive, their behaviors are more. So what and what why you know, normally what happens when this glutathione is produced as a result of this methylation cycle, this glutathione which is produced, it absorbs the excess amount of glutamate which is produced. Suppose, for example, in a neurotypical child, he's having a lot of aggression, he's hyperactive, or he is having a lot of anxiety. So the levels of glutamate will increase. But what happens? But we know that the child is in a state of fright and fight, but suddenly after some time, a neurotypical kid will settle down, he will relax. Why? The excess amount of glutamate which is formed, that is the excitatory neurotransmitter which is formed, it is absorbed by the glutathione which is keeps on producing continuously by this methylation cycle. So as a result, the excess amount which is formed, it is absorbed. But what happens in the kids who are on the spectrum, because of the defect in methylation cycle, the glutathione is not produced or it is produced in the less amount, as a result of which, this glutamate which is keeps on producing in excess amount, it is not absorbed. So it always remains in an excess state. As a result, the children remain in a state of hyperexcitability or you can say aggressive state. Now, again, now it is believed, it is believed and it is, uh, it is believed and recent studies have shown that these uh, uh, methylation cycle, which is responsible for carrying out proteins, oxidations, detoxification process, repairing of genetic material, epigenetics, controlling information is indirectly help in improving a lot of functions in the children who are on the spectrum. Example, they will be helping in uh, controlling their self-awareness, their self-awareness will improve, their social awareness will improve. The self-awareness is a very important thing. Children who are on the spectrum, they are not aware of their body. They are not aware of their body. They are always in a state of unstability. So, they will help in maintaining their self-awareness that thereby their uh, eye contact will improve, their socialization skills will improve, their speech will improve, not uh, what all will not improve as it is responsible for controlling more than 200 reactions in the body. It is said that if we give a trial of these uh, 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 vitamin B12 of methylation or you can say we correct this methylation cycle, there, there will be a lot of improvements which will be seen in the children who are on the spectrum like uh, increase in self-awareness, increase in social awareness, reduction in hyperactivity, their socialization skills will improve, eye contact will improve, their aggression, their uh, you know response to command, their receptive and expressive language, their speech will all improve. Now, this is the literature, this is the evidence, this is the literature and various studies which have shown. But as such, talking in terms of how much evidence is there, the evidence is not very conclusive, it is not that even, uh, very much conclusive to say yes, it has been found to be improving in almost all the kids. Because we have shown that only in 40 to 80 percent of this children on the spectrum, there is a defect in the methylation. Now, another important thing, uh, Dr. Newbrander was the person, uh, Dr. Newbrander was the person who detected it and found that uh, giving shots of vitamin B12, that is uh, MB12, has found to show improvement in children who are on the spectrum. But again, conclusive evidence uh, is not very much there. It is the study which was done by Dr. Newbrander, which has found that there was a lot of improvement in children in which he was giving uh, vitamin B12, methyl B12, in the children who are coming to their clinic. Now, uh, he also said that, now why that according to him, it was said that B12 should be given only in a particular uh, proportion. And the dose which he mentioned was around 64.5 micrograms. Plus, it has to be given in a particular strength, it should be 25 mg per ml. Now, why he suggested that? Because if we are giving a strength low than that and increasing the volume, the surface area of that droplets is less, absorption is less. 
So means to say, if we are using any strength of B12, uh, methyl B12, no, other than 25 mg per ml, then that would not be efficiently absorbed from the, uh, from the uh, at the site of absorption. As a result, it is considered that 25 mg per ml, as per Dr. Newbrander, is considered to be the best for the bed absorption. Now again, there is one more thing. Can it be given orally compared to orally? Why it can't be not given orally? See, it is also believed that the uh, studies were done by Dr. Newbrander and his colleagues, it was found that uh, the absorption of vitamin B12 from the gut uh, in the children who are on the spectrum is very, very poor. Why? Because they have gut issues, they have gut dysbiosis. So various other issues are there, which results in very low absorption of vitamin B12 from the body. It is generally absorbed that hardly 10 to 20 percent of vitamin B12 is absorbed from the gut. So as a result, the amount of uh, methyl groups which are required for moving this cycle will be very, very less. So they'll be the methyl groups which will be releasing into the body will be in the pulsatile nature. As it is, we want the groups to be released in a continuous. So that is the purpose suggested that going for a, a short of vitamin B12 is more effective than giving oral absorption, than giving oral tablets or oral form because absorption is good. But again, uh, there is not very much conclusive evidence. It was the study which was done by Dr. Newbrander. He found it that he noticed these changes. But uh, uh, see, again, it is uh, not very easy to give uh, injections vitamin B12 because it has to be continued for a very long period for 12 to 18 months. There are some side effects are there. If children may, around 10 to 20 percent or 25 percent of the children may note initial transient hyperactivity. They may note oromotor sensory issues. That is, they may be biting non-edible things. So their oromotor issues will increase. Again, the most important thing is their compliance. Now, giving injections to the children on every third day till 18 months is a huge uh, problem for the parents as well as to the kids because of the, you know, compliance issues are there. So the best thing is that what we can do in my uh, opinion or what I, uh, from my personal point of view is that I generally go for the levels of uh, glutathione. That is glutathione. If I found to be the levels of glutathione are low in the children, then definitely I suggest to go for vitamin B12s. Now, again, in the vitamin B12, plus should we go orally or should we go in uh, injectable forms? Again, you can go for check for gut dysbiosis. There are certain markers are there, calcoprotectin and various other markers are there. And accordingly, we can judge if the child is not having that much gut issues, but dysbiosis is not very much there, we can give a trial of oral because it is difficult to go for uh, injectable forms. And uh, we have, uh, there are experiences, we have shared with the experiences of the parents and in my experience also, we have found that children who are taking vitamin B12s, even orally, they have found improvement. But definitely not that much, we can say, those who will be giving on uh, inject uh, injectable shots. So uh, in my personal opinion, I generally uh, go for the glutathione levels. Plus, if the glutathione levels are low and plus the children are having gut dysbiosis, then I would advise them to go for uh, methyl B12 shots. Otherwise, we can give a trial of vitamin B12 oral. So this is the basics of about methylation cycle, how it affects and how we can go about this. And again, the most important thing is that we should also go for children who are having continuously low iron levels, or vitamin B12s are low, and you are suspecting them to be uh, vitamin B12 deficient or absorption is poor, they have gut dysbiosis, we can also go for this MTFHR gene, which is called methyl tetrahydrochromatrophic gene, or we go for MTFHR gene polymorphism tests. This is specifically, it is, studies have shown that this gene is uh, specifically, a major percentage of the children has found to be low in children who are on Asian subcontinent population. So this was a small video about uh, methylation cycle and the role of vitamin B12 and some controversies which are surrounding vitamin B12 in autism. Thank you.